Welcome back to lesson two. Today we are getting the yarn on your loom. We'll be showing you three different ways, plus how to make a slip knot in different ways. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. So we're gonna be putting the yarn on the loom today, making slip knots, and then making three different cast-ons. But first I wanna go over the supplies that I'm using that most people will have in their stash. Usually people can find things like this in the store. It's a 24 peg loom. This is a Nifty Knitter brand, which isn't made anymore, but there are a ton of them out there. There's 24 pegs and they're spaced from, from middle of one peg, center peg to center peg, five eighths of an inch when you measure it. It's about five and a half inches uh, across or 14 centimeters, that's roughly the same. So there are different brands uh, that make them without mentioning all the brands, they're just different colors. I'm gonna use the one that's the same spacing and a similar peg. I'm gonna use this one because it's lighter in color and you can see the yarn more clearer. I think it's gonna be a little dark here. And this is the uh, KB Looms 36 peg 5 8 gauge in their chunky loom set. For the yarn, I'm going to be using a super bulky six weight yarn. This is from Premier Everyday and it's a super bulky six. Some other yarns that would be appropriate are Bernat Softy Chunky, which is a five weight yarn. There's also Bernat Beyond, which is a uh, six weight yarn. So uh, all these are kind of appropriate and stick with the light colored yarn. All right, let's begin working some slip knots. So in order to get your yarn on your loom, uh, and you can notice I don't have a uh, starter peg or anchor peg, and we did talk about that in the previous series. So if you missed all the overview stuff and you have questions, be sure and refer to that first and make your comments down below. Okay, so um, I tie my slip knot. The easiest way, I think, is just to wrap it around your finger twice. Okay, so I've got my tail, and I wrap it around twice. And then now I take the back part coming from the ball, which is the working yarn. I take that and go right over the first loop here, over my finger, just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna pull that loop here, which is now at the back, and put it up and over the end of my finger. All right, and when I pull on this yarn here, this yarn tail, and this part here with the working yarn, it gets tighter on my finger. And that's what I take and I place on the loom, and that will be my starting peg. And I can just uh, pull that and cinch it up, not too terribly tight, but enough to where it doesn't come off the loom or get too snug. And then I can just tuck the tail underneath and I'm ready to go starting my first cast on. Let's do a couple of other uh, slip knots. We'll do two more. Okay, let's do another one. And this just takes place on the table here. We're gonna take our tail, pull out a nice length and make a loop. Just put it right on top of itself. Then we're gonna pick up that big loop and place it on top of our tail, just like that. And it makes kind of a pretzel look. Okay, now you're gonna pick up this bottom part where the tail is, okay? And you're just gonna pull on the two strands coming from it, just like that. So one's the tail, one's coming from the ball. We call that the working yarn. And then just pull on uh, one of the strands, make it smaller, and you've got yourself a slip knot to put right onto your loom, all right? The next one I want to show you is going right on top of your loom and you can get to work immediately. So you may end up deciding you like this one the best. It depends on which yarn you're using. It works um, better for some than others. Uh, I've never shown this on camera before, but let's do it. So just pull a, a tail through four to six inches and uh, start by wrapping the peg twice that you want to be peg one. So we're going to, um, I'm going to go in, to, in this direction to the right. I'm going to go between two pegs, go backwards to the left, wrapping, and then we'll do it one more time. So we've wrapped twice, and I'm just going to hold on to um, both the tail and the back of this one here. All right. Now, I'm going to go underneath this bottom uh, strand here, okay? So this bottom loop, and I'm going to um, put, my, uh, put my hook right on this groove and then push down. Okay, and then we're just making a loop where you're sliding and pulling this loop out, okay? Then you're just going to lift up and over, and that's what we call knit over. So we're just gonna lift up and over, and then we're gonna pull on our tail. And when we pull on our tail, it actually tightened this up, and we made a slip knot right there. 
that's it. That's all you do. And you are ready to begin casting on. All right, let's begin by double E-wrap cast on. So we're going to double E-wrap cast on and it starts with a slip knot on your first peg. And all you do is just like the method before, I'm just going to E-wrap the peg. Okay, so it makes a, a cursive E. Okay, and that's really why we call it E-wrap. So it's kind of upside down. If you uh, imagine an E that's cursive, it looks like that. That's why it's called an E-wrap. See, just like that. It goes up and around here. So E-wrap that peg. I'm going to hold on to that tail in the back, e-wrap the peg, and knit over. Just lift up and over. Okay? And then your next peg, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to e-wrap, but you're going to do it one more time. So it's a double e-wrap. E-wrap that peg twice. Remember, we already had the slip knot that already formed a knit stitch on it because you actually worked it on that last, uh, that last uh, slip knot. So now here we're just taking the lower loop and pulling it up and over. And then we pull on our working yarn, the working yarn coming from the ball. When we pull on that, what it does is it tightens up the stitch in between. And then um, we won't have um, too loose of loop here. Okay. Now we're just going to E-wrap the next peg twice. One, two. And that's all you do to cast on. It's great because you can just continue to... Um, work in one direction and then when you're ready to begin knitting we're going to work in the opposite direction and that'll be on the next video for knitting uh, the knit all the knit stitches all right so uh, I'm going to begin to show you how to do a different cast on let's take this off and uh, make another slip knot and we'll meet you back when you've got your slip knot on pause your video I'll see you in a minute now we're going to do the e-wrap flat cast on there are some patterns that uh, just say wrap the pegs and then you work the first uh, row flat. And uh, this is really what we're going to be doing here. Um, if you look at my overview series, it doesn't actually show this one. What it does show is working an E-wrap all the way down and all the way back. And this is very similar, except it makes a nice tighter cast on. And as a beginner, you want a nice cast on instead of having it like just really big in loops on the end of your work. So what we do is we have already got our slip knot on here and we're just going to E-wrap just like you did before, but just E-wrap one time and go all the way down until you get as many stitches as you intend to have for your project. And we'll talk about that more in our next lessons. But for now, you just E-wrap as many as you need, okay? And then you're going to turn and come back and we're going to hold the yarn above our pegs and we're going to flat knit. So we'll, we'll talk about more about this stitch uh, in another video, but this is how we're going to do this cast on. I'm going to go down here to the end and lift up and over. So yes, this very uh, last stitch is going to get wrapped twice. So lift up and over and then pull on that yarn. It's especially important to go ahead and pull on that stitch for the very first one because it needs to be tighter. Okay. Lift up and over on the next stitch and knit that. Make sure you got all of your strands of your yarn. Okay. And then go to the next one. Now, if you notice, I'm not pulling really tightly. Okay. If I do that, it stretches this stitch right here. I just gently lay it on top, lift up and over, and let it fall to the back. Okay. Do it again. Lift up and over. And as you can see, when I pull to the back, this pulls the yarn slightly to the back. And just continue doing that until you get back to peg one and you're ready for uh, knit stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the loom. When we come back, we'll do another slip knot or have that already on there. Pause your video and we'll do the last cast on. See you in a moment. This last cast on is called the chain cast on. You see it in a lot of patterns. It's actually much easier than you think, uh, but there's a couple of ways to do it. So I'm actually gonna show you two ways to do it. One is using your fingers and one is using the crochet hook. Be sure and stay tuned after this because I'm gonna talk uh, just for a few minutes on a little bit of troubleshooting for cast ons. All right, so we'll begin by making our slip knot. Uh, rewind if you need to do that. 
Got a nice uh, size stitch here or slip knot. I'm going to keep it larger because I'm going to need to um, pull some yarn through here. So uh, we're going to do this with our fingers here. Put your tail on the inside. And uh, I've got my working yarn on the outside of my loom. So this is the outside of my loom and this is the inside. Okay. And now I'm going to go in this direction and I'm going to put my uh, slip knot between the next two pegs, just like this. And then I want to feed this yarn from the ball through this little hole. So I'm going to kind of pinch it and pull from the back here. Okay, I'm going to hold on to this uh, tail here for the first stitch and kind of pull on this yarn. And once I got it in there nice and secure, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so from the back, before I make this smaller, you can see that I have this nice little teardrop shape. See, it looks like a little teardrop. It's a chain. Okay, and then I have two pieces coming out of it, and next time we do it, it's going to make another chain on the inside. So let's come around here and um, go ahead, and now, you're, now your hole is much bigger. You can uh, make it smaller by pulling on it, or you can leave it that size to work with it. And just go ahead and pull in some more yarn and pull tight like this. Just kind of pull on there, and it leaves you another one of these little chains here okay you can do it from the inside here and push it through like this and you can see how it moves the yarn and see how it just gets bigger go ahead and pull on it to make it smaller once you get going it's much faster once you get used to it so see how that goes you can also go in the opposite direction so I'll do that in a moment here. Once it's complete and you've got all the stitches on here you want, you're just going to place your loop right on there and uh, cinch it up and you've got uh, a nice uh, ending to your chain cast on. If you end up making this all the way around, there's another method for it, but we'll talk about that in another lesson when we talk about knitting in the round. All right, so go ahead and take this off. Go ahead and make another slip knot. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put my um, oops, slip knot in this other hand. And we're going to go in this direction here. So I'm going to have my uh, slip knot in between the next two pegs. And then I'm just going to pull it through. And the first stitch is always a little bit more fiddly. But there we go, we've got it. And it's the same technique. Okay, this is what it looks like from the back. Like that. And it still uh, does the stitch with the um, this V-shaped or chain stitch. Okay. So let me pull this off and I'm going to show you what it looks like using a crochet hook. I had told you to have a crochet hook. Uh, if you've got one, um, we'll do it. If you don't, you can use your fingers. And on smaller looms, it's easier with a crochet hook. Hold on one moment. Okay. So here's my crochet hook. We're going to go on the inside because this is where my loop is. Put my hook uh, where we want to go. So I've got my yarn coming out here. And then we're going to go in this direction. So we put the hook where we want to go. And then um, we're going to take our yarn and go around the hook and then we're going to pull through. So this thing right here, this is called a yarn over when you wrap the yarn over and around something and then you just pull it on through. Okay. And we're just going to pull it through this little hole here. And of course I'm using my other fingers uh, back here to hold on to the tail. You may not be as coordinated as that. I understand you can hold on to it and hold it against the loom. Um, you can set it down on something else. Uh, I know I was a lot more fiddly with it when I was a beginner. It's okay. You can hold it however you need to. Uh, I'm not going to hold this fancy this time. I'm just going to let it sit there and then I'm going to go around, yarn over with my hand. So just yarning it over and then pinch and hold it. 
and then we're going to pull through. See, I do it by naturally now. Um, but let's hold the tail in this part. Now that it's wrapped over, let's just hold them like this, like you might do it the first time. And then just pull that on through that loop. Okay, and you see how it made that, uh, that uh, loop there? And just go on to the next one. I'm going to show you what it looks like, how I normally get do it. Once you get going, you can actually chain cast on this fast. Okay? So this is a great way to do your cast on and then just set it on top and you're ready to begin your knitting. Okay, so um, we've come to the end. We've made our three cast-ons. You're ready to start your knitting. That will be in the next lesson, but let's talk for a moment about tension. The word tension is how tight or loose that you work. So if you uh, look at your cast on and you see that they're nice and even and consistent, that's great. But you can also uh, pull on the yarn after you um, make a stitch and ease up that tension or you can um, uh, come back here and try and kind of get as much yarn out uh, slack out of here and then come on to the next stitch and then come on to the next stitch and then pull on that there so that you've gotten rid of some of that extra slack. And that's a way that you can play with it so that when your knitting starts coming off a loom, it doesn't get loopy. You're not gonna be able to tell this um, immediately um, for a while until you've started um, your journey in loom knitting a bit more, but I wanted to have this in this video so when you come back to this uh, video later, you can see how I played with it and then just kind of made the stitches smaller or bigger. So if I want to make the stitches bigger, I can come to the end here where the working yarn is and get a little more yarn in it. Come over here, get a little more yarn here, a little more here, a little more here. And this technique is handy because if you are way too tight on your cast on and I said, okay, now make your knit stitches and you're like, oh my gosh, I wrap this part too much and my cast on's too tight. This is how you can fix it. So you just come down here again. If I need more and I, I don't have enough for down here, come down to the end, pull on it, and then I hold it with my finger and then I pull on the next one and then hold this part with my finger, pull on the next one. And sometimes I have to use my other hand here and then just start pulling on the slack and getting that slack out of there and make these stitches um, looser, okay? And get that extra yarn all the way down to the end. You just play with it. So that's how you can make sure if your stuff is too tight or too loose and you can fix it. The tightness that we just talked about, that's usually the part that most new limb knitters will do. They'll, they tend to be too tight on their tension and you need to have a way to loosen those things up. Don't worry about it if you're too tight of a knitter. Um, some people are too loose and yeah, you're just gonna have to intentionally say to yourself um, to pull it snug, a little bit more snug every time, pull each stitch. Uh, but if you're a tight loom knitter, uh, don't be afraid uh, of it. You could break a peg if you go way too tight. So if it starts feeling tight and stiff, go ahead and pull out your work and rip it out and do it again. I'm a big believer in uh, taking those things out so that you learn what happened and you become a better knitter. All right, so I want you to practice those three cast-ons uh, a few extra times. And then the next time we see each other, we'll start working on our knit stitches. And you will um, just use whichever cast-on that you prefer. There is no right or wrong answer here. Be sure to click on the next video link in the description and subscribe with notifications for new lessons with the bell icon so that you know when the next video comes out. We also have more information on our website. I can't wait to see you in the next lesson. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.